No, you're fine. Hey guys, I'm Alex Ackerman. I'm your contest manager. Um, and this is Cosplay 101, taking your first steps. So if you're anything like me and you've left the community night thinking, oh my god, these costumes are beautiful. I want to do that myself. You're in luck because these amazing people are going to help take you through taking your first steps um, and hopefully sitting you on your way to cosplay. We have some really, really talented people up here. Um, so much so that I'm so excited to announce that as of last night, all of them have actually been honorable mentions or higher in our contest at BlizzCon. Um, and I would love to introduce you to them. So let's meet our first panelist. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Castile. Um, I I'm think. half of the duo that is Steel Barrel Cosplay. Um, Woo! <laughs> uh, I've been cosplaying for about five years now uh, with costumes such as the Witch Doctor, uh, Kel'Thuzad that you see there, uh, Deckard Kane, and uh, last night, the Prophet Velen. Um, so I've been an honorable mention uh, three years, and last uh, night I placed third in the costume contest. Mm -hmm. I am Sparks, or if you're my mom, I'm Kristen from Little Sparks Cosplay. Hi, Mom. Hi, Kristen's <laughs> mom. She's in the audience right now. <laughs> yeah, Mom. <laughs> Um, I have been very honored to receive honorable mentions at BlizzCon for both this costume, my Master Kermie, and my gender bend of Cenarius. And then last night, I received fourth place for my Mystic Kingdom's Arthas cosplay, Yay. Uh, which I also won at TwitchCon with, in the best armor category as well. So these ladies are... Hi, I'm Dana. <laughs> and I'm Courtney. And when our powers combine... We are the Egg Sisters. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> Whoa. Oscar, applause. Um, we are real life sisters. That's a question we get asked a lot. Uh, we like to do creature costumes, and we like to try a bunch of new materials with everything we do. Uh, you may or may not recognize us from these pictures, or wherever they are, up there. <laughs> um, the Undead Rogue we did in 2015. Um, we did some Bloodborne action this year, um, Eileen and Amelia, and then uh, we bought Blackheart here last year. Cool. cool. So meet your people and uh, let's get into it. So I think um, for me personally, the most daunting task is um, just taking my first step and actually deciding I would like to cosplay. Uh, so how did you guys actually get into cosplay to begin with? Uh, Dana and Courtney? Um, as you can see by the sassy cat women in that picture, uh, it's never too early to familiarize yourself with pleather. Um, when we were younger, uh, we always uh, made Halloween costumes, and I think as we got older, uh, Halloween became conventions, especially BlizzCon. Uh, our first costumes, uh, like the Drenae and Undead and the Trolls, is a lot of bought items that were modified. And then as we've gone along, especially in 2014 when we did the Garuda, we watched a lot of tutorials and fellow prop makers and dived into a bunch of new materials. And since then, we've been going hard at it. Leveling up. Leveling up. <laughs> Absolutely. And then Kristen, how about you? Um, I first got into cosplay in 2014. I had been an admirer of cosplay on Facebook. I would follow all the big names, and I loved watching the online uh, replays of the costume contest over the years. And in 2014, we decided that we were trying to get tickets to BlizzCon. And even then, it was notoriously difficult. So I kind of was going to take that as a sign that if we managed to get tickets to BlizzCon, I would use that as my push to finally try to cosplay. And I really had very little sewing experience. I had been like arts and crafty pretty much my whole life, but it, I had no idea how to make armor or any of that. So I just kind of used that as my excuse and <laughs> pushed myself to build it. And I got hooked after BlizzCon 2014, and I have done it every year since. Well, we're very, very happy to have you back, definitely. Because I remember that costume, and it was, it was amazing, Thank for sure. Uh, Mike, how about you? Uh, first and foremost, it was my perfect and beautiful wife, <laughs> hopefully in the audience. Shout out, out to Mike's wife. Hope Yay! There she is. That's the, 
<laughs> That's the second half of Steel Barrel Cosplay. Um, no, it's, I, I've been to every single BlizzCon, and every single year the costumes have been getting better and better and better, and I thought to myself, man, you know, about four or five years ago, I was like, I really want to do that. That's something that I really want to get into, but I didn't know how or kind of where to start, and, uh, you know, with her help, essentially, it was, you know, we're going to do this. You know, we saw, you know, Kamui, uh, Protoss Mage, um, Sick Horse uh, cosplay had this really cool StarCraft uh, adjutant that they won with, and it was like, man, I'm going to, I want to do that. And so you just, I just dwelled in and started off. So, you know, you just take that first step. Yeah, and I think that shortly after that, you did the Witch Doctor cosplay, right? Absolutely, yeah. That was the really the first costume that we competed in, and uh, it was the Witch Doctor. Awesome. I think that the coolest part about everybody's origin story, at least up on this panel, is that you don't necessarily have that background in sewing or anything like that. You kind of just said one day, I really want to do this thing, and then you did the damn thing, right? which is awesome. Um, so once you've had that talk with yourself, Oh, thanks. Hey, guys. Uh, once you've had that pep talk with yourself and you've decided, okay, we're going to do this, there's actually a secret to deciding how you pick what you want your first cosplay to, to be. And we're all going to let you know what it is, is you go to the tavern with your friends and you have some drinks and then you just decide whatever happens, happens. Uh, no, actually, alcohol aside, um, choosing what you're going to first make is actually really daunting as well. Yeah. How, how exactly do you go about picking exactly what to make first? I will admit that a little liquid courage goes a long way. Uh, sometimes it's really intimidating to start a new build, and it seems like a big daunting task, and I would recommend breaking it down into smaller parts and just tackle it one thing at a time. Yeah, and definitely um, picking a project that you're so passionate about that despite all the struggles, the ups and downs, that you'll stick through with it until the end, until you finish. Um, also build something that you really want to build, not just because it's popular, but because you're really excited to do it, or it's an opportunity to learn a new material or a new technique. Uh, Courtney and I just have a, like, a private Facebook uh, group that we just throw inspiration in, whether it be just pictures of characters or techniques or materials, and then it's a nice reference to go back and look at for when you're ready to do it. Yep. Yeah, because you guys don't actually live anywhere near each other, do you? But an hour away. OK, so having something like that is awesome to, to collaborate. Kind of yeah. have a collaborative space. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Um, and Kristen, how about you? Uh, for me, for choosing my first cosplay, um, I had suffered from a lot of anxiety and stage fright. And I didn't know how I would handle being in the spotlight of a cosplayer and having people want to take pictures of me. And, and I also wanted to be very comfortable um, with my physical appearance in the costume. So actually choosing something that fit me as far as body type for my first costume was pretty important to me. Um, I didn't want to try to look like a night elf because I obviously am not tall. <laughs> I don't look anything like a night elf. And I thought maybe that would be a little bit harder on me. Um, and so I also wanted a character that I really connected with. And one of my favorite characters is Chromie from World of Warcraft. <laughs> so being a gnome or a dwarf or something like that really, you know, would made sense to me for my first character. I also wanted something that had a little bit of all the different cosplay elements. I wanted to try making a prop. I wanted a little bit of sewing, a little bit of armor, wig styling, everything. And that costume had all of those little, those little things that I wanted to try out. So I did choose Chromie as my first costume. But then beyond that, every year, I've kind of chosen something that I wanted to focus on. Uh, like this year with my Mystic Kingdoms Arthas, I wanted to do something very sculptural with an extremely complicated paint job. I don't know why I wanted to do that. It was extremely tedious, but I really wanted to challenge myself. So it doesn't now matter to me whether I have to gender bend or, or cosplay a race that might not look anything like me. I'll still do it because I love the character and I love the challenge of that costume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's really, you know, it touches on what you say. When you're taking your first step into cosplay, to really kind of, you know, to connect uh, with what you're, what you're choosing. 
uh, especially if you're going to be looking at it for the next year or three months or two days or whatever it is that you've given yourself uh, allotment for and to create the costume. But uh, for us, you know, it, it is what fits and, and what we like. Um, and then on top of that, it's, you know, I like to bring something new to the, to the cosplay, you know, contest or to BlizzCon in general. Um, something that really kind of hasn't been done before, like Decker Kane. Uh, we really hadn't seen anything like that. Uh, and it's a, it's a bald guy, so, you know, it's like, all right, that, that's cool. Um, but honestly, you know, I, I, if you want to cosplay anything, just do it. You know, it, it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, I know I was really scared uh, my first year in cosplay. Uh, and this was the actual first costume, and that's why I'm wearing it here on this panel, uh, the first costume that I brought to BlizzCon. But I was really kind of, you know, uh, scared of it, like, oh my god, it's a pirate, you know, it's a blood cell buccaneer, what am I going to do? Um, but I liked it, mm -hmm. and so that's why I chose it. Uh, and then taking further steps, it's like, you know, what can I do in-game? Like with Kel'Thuzad, you know, he's a lich, and it's kind of impossible to make a skeleton, you know, when you're a human being. So, uh, you know, how am I going to make his legs sway around? And so, you know, you can see in the picture, it's just cloth strips and PVC pipe. Um, and we kind of made a, a hoop skirt attachment. So when I, I walk with my sassy sway, you know, the, you get this, like, swaying motion. Um, Work it, girl. Hey. So, you know, uh, but yeah, just to definitely kind of what fits, what I like and connect with. Um, and, and go from there. Yeah, I mean, it definitely sounds like, above all, what I'm hearing from you guys is just go with what you love um, because you're going to be staring at it for a really long time. <laughs> yes. So you've decided what you're going to make. You're finally actually ready to do the thing. You probably need some tools in order to do that, and I know that that can definitely be terrifying because I've seen, just from watching you guys make stuff and following your progressions on Facebook, you use a lot of different tools. So as a beginning cosplayer, what sort of things would I really want to look for like as a must-have? Uh, well, every costume, you're going to probably have some elements that cross over into other costumes. So uh, you might need a sewing machine because you're pretty much always going to have to sew something. Uh, so there's some tools that you... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you're probably going to have some tools that you'll use on every costume. And then as you start cosplaying, you'll... Pick up a material that you really enjoy. It might be sewing, not for them, not for me, but it might actually be sewing. You might find that you really like embroidery or something like that. Um, for me, my favorite material is EVA foam. Uh, you can get it as foam floor mats, as in the picture above me. You can get it from places like TNTCosplaySupply.com, which uh, will sell EVA foam in different thicknesses in big rolls. And it's smooth on both sides, and it's awesome, and it, and it makes your work really, really clean. Um, one of the reasons I use this material is because it's extremely versatile, and it's very lightweight. So this armor here is made from EVA foam. Um, you can obviously see I made it nice and smooth and shiny like armor, but this hand is also made from the same material. Uh, you can use different tools like a soldering iron, uh, blades, and all kinds of stuff to carve it and add texture and make it look like wood if that's what you want. Um, the tool that I use most in my arsenal, in my craft room, is my Dremel, uh, a rotary tool with a sanding tip and I will spend 500 hours of my costume process sitting there dremeling foam. Um, it's extremely time consuming, but if you take your time and do it, you can make some beautiful, beautiful things, and they typically do stay very lightweight. Uh, foam can also be heat formed, uh, so a heat gun is also really helpful to have, and I think Mike yeah. can tell you more about yeah, that. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think, especially when starting out, a heat gun, a good heat gun, can really help you build a lot of costumes, especially if you're using EVA foam. You can you can heat up the foam and kind of, you know, bend it to shape. Uh, but aside from the heat gun, we use that a lot on Warbler, which is a thermoplastic. Uh, you can heat it up. It's it almost becomes like a putty, uh, and you can do several shapes. Uh, the Kel'Thuzad head that I had up here earlier that was blocking everybody's vision. I'm sorry, uh, I want to see all your beautiful faces. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, we that was made out of of Warbler. Uh, for the most part, and EVA foam. So I, I think those are two really essential tools that you can use when starting out uh, to create a variety of costumes. 
Yeah, and I think that safety, I have to be like the cosplay mom right now. <laughs> safety is also really important. So I know that uh, Egg Sisters, you guys had me add the mask up on there. Um, yeah, um, you're using a lot of chemicals and a lot of particles. If you're dremeling foam for hours, you're going to want to wear uh, a mask so you don't breathe in those particles because you're like, oh, it's not that bad, and then you go blow your nose. Black <laughs> boogers, man. Black boogers. So uh, safety first, and even if it's, you know, I always, it's like, oh, I'm just going to do a little bit. You should always, uh, safety. We have to yell at each other all the yeah. time. <laughs> So I think that the tool also, um, that's often forgotten a lot, is budget. Uh, and when I say budget, I mean in both time and money. Because uh, it seems really easy when you're working on something that you love to kind of just like keep dumping time and money into it. And yeah. then $5,000 and six months later, you're like, oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> um, but then on the flip side of that, I can also see that there's this misconception that if I spend all this money on this cosplay that my cosplay is infinitely better than someone maybe who got kind of thrifty with what they made. So yeah. how do you go about even tackling um, something from a budget side? Well, you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because that, I think that is a huge misconception. And I think that that's the great thing about cosplay is that you can use a variety of different materials uh, and be thrifty and use coupons and go to Michael's or wherever it is that you're going to get fabric, Joann's and use their, their weekly coupons. Um, and as you can see you know, up above, uh, we write out an itemized list of what we think we're going to need. Uh, and I emphasize, emphasize think, um, because it always ends up being maybe a little less or, or maybe not using that because you know, as you go through. But just kind of writing out what you're going to need. You know, what do you plan to make? What do you think you're going to need to use to make that item? Uh, and it really kind of helps you plan out what you're going to create. Uh, and on top of that, you see a, this funny picture with, with a calendar. That's an actual journal that we used when we created Velen. So we wrote out this whole list of things that we needed to do before we even started the program, or you know, the, I, the, the, pro, you know, the project. Uh, and then we wrote out a calendar, okay, this is the general plan to get from point A to point B. Uh, and it doesn't always go with that, uh, as we were still painting in the hotel room, basically, uh, you know, the night before. But uh, it really saves a lot of headaches uh, going and moving forward with your, you know, your costume. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely um, trying to spread the cost out over several months is extremely helpful because getting a $1,000, you know, pile of materials all at once is going to, like, kick you in the butt. But if you want to make something that's complicated, which a lot of people tend to even on their first costume jump into something that's very complicated. Uh, like my Cenarius body that you see up in the pictures, uh, that was the second attempt of that. I actually had to completely rebuild the framework for that just because I knew I could do better. So not only did I have to buy the materials for that once, I had to throw them in the trash and start all over and buy it again. Um, there's some items that are usually a little bit more expensive uh, for every costume. For me, the wig. I tend to do lovely, elaborate, very heavy wigs. Um, this one alone has 45 feet of hair just in the buns. Oh my god. So this wig was almost $200 uh, just for the wig materials and to make the gems and everything. So you might have items where you're spending a large chunk of cash. The other thing is little things add up. You might not think that, you know, I make this out of EVA foam. If I buy a pack of floor mats, it's only, you know, $10 here, $20 there. But then you're buying body paint and contacts and fake lashes and makeup and needle and thread, and then you break your sewing machine and you need to like, replace the sewing foot on your machine. And all those little things, you'll add them up at the end of your costume and you'll be like, wow. But there's also a lot of things that will transfer over to your next costume. So you might need to buy a whole box of screws and you might only use five, but then you have them. So your next costume, you won't have to buy those. So once you get your, your crafting area kind of loaded with some of the basic materials, your next costume might not be such a, you know, kick. Because <laughs> yeah. you'll have those things already. You won't be buying your heat gun or your sewing machine because you'll already have it there. Absolutely. Yeah, I think also, you know, spreading your, if you can allot yourself more time for a costume, if you're, you know, 
you can make, and I love the fact that people build really cool costumes that, are, that seem very basic, but they're not, or they're a lot of fun, and that's like the cool thing about it. But if you can allot yourself more time, it does make that spending, as she's mentioning, a lot easier to absorb. Yeah, absolutely. And so, Kristen, you mentioned having to remake that body a couple times, and I think that that is something that is not really discussed a lot in the cosplay community, and by that I mean the, the topic of failure. Um, bottom line, it's gonna happen. Like, for sure it's gonna happen, and that's 100% okay. So how do you guys even go about, you know, handling when you fail? Well, first of all, like she said, you definitely expect to fail. It will happen, um, and that's okay. Uh, it's good to laugh it off, and if you expect it, it's not so horrible. Um, you're just kind of like, okay, man, let's just redo that. And if you give yourself enough time to do that, um, it's not so hard to break off from. Um, and also, when in doubt, uh, battle damage. You just make it look intentional. So. <laughs> uh, just an example, the crown right here, the first attempt at that, uh, we sculpted it in clay, and we did this elaborate three-part mold out of stone and it took all day and we went to cast it and the casting stuck and we had to chisel the crown out of the cocoon of hell and we had to repair this horrible crown and then recast it in something else but and in the end we have a story to tell and now we have a crown and it's all good there you go yeah <laughs> now we know not to do that again so yeah i mean for us um you could see a picture of a car hood foot of tails uh, I mean, that's the basic, you know, scene in our garage. Um, we cast, I think, seven or eight tails uh, before we got it right. So, you know, there's like, a, you know, a kind of progression of learning something every time. You know, you can see in the first one, it just shriveled up. We used too light of a foam, uh, which I wouldn't recommend starting out in cosplay and using. Um, but every time, the point being, we learn something new. So despite what your mistake may be, as long as you learn from that, you're going to be able to step forward and get better and get better and get better. And I think, you know, once you take that first step, which is the most important part, that every, every time you learn something new, whatever that may be. Yep, absolutely. Kristen, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, um, I always learn something when I, when I mess up. Um, a lot of my Twitch fam, hi Twitch fam, <laughs> um, they uh, watched me try to make my Arthas sword for the first time and I tried a material that I wasn't used to and I melted the foam and it was just horrible and I just completely scrapped it. And I ended up making it out of EVA foam because that's what I always do. But um, I now know not to do what I did the first time. So if I do want to try that material again, I know the mistakes I made and you just, you learn from it. Awesome. Yeah, uh, just to add to that, uh, I'm still learning stuff and this is a very basic and I think it, it applies very well to this, this panel. Um, the other day uh, at preparing for BlizzCon, I pulled out my Deckard Kane uh, woolen shawl and I threw it in the washer and then the dryer, and uh, it did not turn out very well as it's a shriveled mess of ball, and so now I have to, you know, we have to get that remade. But I know now that I can't put wool, as stupid as that may sound, <laughs> into, into a dryer and, and dry it off. Yeah. So. Another thing that we did is we have LEDs in here, and we wanted to reflect the light out. So we're like, oh, yeah, let's put foil behind it. Well, foil on the back of lights is a bad idea. <laughs> and we almost shorted it all out. So we had to peel it all off and then make a layer. And then we ended up putting foil on there eventually. But yeah, don't do that either. <laughs> you guys are going to give me a heart attack. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we're going to tap Chromey for this and go back in time. <laughs> so we're going back in time. And we're back in time. And you're facing yourself as you are just about to start cosplaying. What advice would you give yourself as like the single most important piece of advice that you could give? What would that be? Do not wait. <laughs> I get very emotional talking about this topic. I waited until I was, sorry, until I was 32 to start God's playing. And it, I'm sitting here talking to all of you right now. I wouldn't have been able to do this in 1999 or 2013 before I started cosplay. It's an amazing, amazing hobby. Yep, it really awesome. is. Awesome. <laughs> I totally agree. Uh, Courtney and I are not super social, 
And we, our goal last year at BlizzCon was we're going to say hi to three people. And here we are this year. It's craziness. Uh, I guess our tip to remember is you don't have to make an exact replica of what you want to make. Make it your own. Uh, a lot of times in-game designs are not meant to be real life. You know, they, it's, we, we're often like, oh, who designed this? What is this? And you just kind of, you go with it, make it your own, and it's kind of like every pass player, even is the same character, everyone has their own take on it. It's really cool. Yeah, um, for example, our Trigool, we kind of took our own take on it. Um, we wanted to, uh, and you can elaborate on this more if you'd like. Uh, we, it looked like it was made out of like real flesh and blood, so we're like, all right, we want it to look like blood is pumping through it. We want it to look shiny and fleshy. We animated the hearts. We made them out of some nice dragon skin silicone. Um, and we kind of just, when we were sculpting, we also kind of went our own way with like the rib cage. We kind of went semi-game style as well as semi-realistic. And sometimes it's fun to kind of balance between the cartoon style and realism. Um, and just make it your own. Make it your own style. Do it for you. You do you. You do you. You do you. <laughs> I think uh, the best advice I could have gave myself was don't be afraid to reach out to people. Uh, and, I, and I mean, you know, your favorite cosplayers, you know, they're people too. And, you know, like these guys said down at the end, you know, they were going to say hi to three people or whoever that may have been. You were the first one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> they said hi to me too. <laughs> but say hello and, and, and reach out. If you guys have a problem, ask very specific questions, you know. I, I'm trying to attach this and I'm I just not getting it. And you'd be surprised at, at how willing people are to engage in conversation and talk, because we do this all year, and we love it, and it's passion, and, and, and just don't be afraid to get involved and, and start now and, and ask questions, because you'd be surprised at how many people, your idols, are willing to go, hey, this is how I did this, and it, it just helps you move along and create that costume. Yeah, I would definitely say, Mike said in his opening speech that this is like the biggest family reunion, and I would definitely say that the cosplay community, especially this one in particular, is very much so a family. Yeah. Um, definitely so. don't be scared. Don't think, I don't fit the cosplayer mold. I mean, that's one of the things that held me back. So there, there really is no cosplayer mold. There's actually a lot of molds. <laughs> All right, and with that, I think that we actually have some time for a Q&A. So if you have a question, we have two mics on either end of the aisles. If you would line up, um, we will get rolling on questions. And I actually think we already have a question over here on the left-hand side. My left-hand side? Your right-hand side? Who's that guy? Hi. Over here. Hi. Hey, who's that guy? We don't know him. I'm Mike. <laughs> Long time fanboy, first time cosplayer. <laughs> so, Mike, you mentioned that, you know, getting into cosplay is important to reach out to other cosplayers to ask questions and learn. For someone who's not comfortable, like, Facebook stalking a particular cosplayer, is there, like, a community or, or some way to get in touch with a lot of people and communicate about this, or...? Yeah, uh, 100%. There's actually a Facebook group, which I believe there's thousands of members. The Blizz... The I BlizzCon Cosplay Discussion Group. Yes. <laughs> it's Blizz, awesome. BlizzCon it's Cosplay Discussion Group. Join that group. Uh, advanced cosplayers are there. Beginning cosplayers are there. They talk all the time about costumes and progress threads. It's, it's a great... It's not for fans of cosplay. I am the admit of that group, so <laughs> just so you know, I oh. will deny you if you don't plan on cosplaying. Yes, so if you're, you're going to apply... Make sure that you're somebody who wants to actually cosplay at BlizzCon. There you <laughs> and go. and Just then you watch can join this us. Panel, you should join us. Yeah. yeah. Be ready and to make go. Make a costume. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Um, let's go over here. Hi. Um, I haven't really cosplayed myself yet, but I really, really want to. I don't have that much time to do it, though, and I, I really do want to learn how to sew for it my first costume. I just don't really know where to start because no one in my direct area really does cosplay or just the Dutch community itself is actually quite small. So where would be the best place to, place to learn to start? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Uh, for so YouTube, honestly. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, how to sew X. Uh, I mean, and I, it's a silly answer maybe, but that's a great question because we constantly are on YouTube. 
how do I dye this gem? You know, how do I sew this? How do I make a pattern? And you can learn so much from that, uh, you know, on top of the communities. But that, that is a great question, and I definitely would recommend it. I will interject one thing. is a, It's actually a really good tip for if you're learning to sew, like you need to make a base garment for right. a costume. One of the things that I actually taught my fiancé to do this year was to cut apart an old piece of clothing, just cut it along all of the seams that are already there, and then you automatically have a pattern to remake that type of item. So if you need to make a pair of pants, you cut along all the seams, you'll have all the pieces that you can then trace onto new fabric and then sew them back the way that they were. And then you'll learn how clothing is actually put together. Thank that's you, that's very welcome. helpful. Welcome. Awesome, thank you. And we'll go over here. Hi there, I'm uh, Shondor and I'm from the East Coast. Uh, so I do a lot of cosplay over there, but it's always hard for me to figure out how to get it over here because I fly, it's a you know decent flight. Um, so I was just wondering what uh, strategies you use to do to get uh, bigger pieces, more complex pieces safely through um, various different you know airport security or uh, just shipping it here to hotels. Um, What's your experience with that? Away, don't you? No. Oh, that's right. You're close. I personally get to drive, so we rent an SUV. So I'm really bad, like, at giving advice about how to pack stuff. You guys have like traveled with yours, right? Yeah, we're from Chicago, so um, we fly. Actually, Reinhardt, we had to drive because he was insane. We rented um, at U-Haul. You can rent a mini trailer, and it's pretty reasonably priced. So if you can drive, you can rent that, and then you can transport everything in there. Um, but if you're flying. We have a lot of uh, good experience with, we just have giant plastic totes that we fit everything in, and then um, we fly southwest, so you get your free checked-in bags. Yeah. So we come in, like, all right, we're gonna take advantage, here's our six bins. <laughs> but it's plastic, it keeps everything from shaking around, and just Cheap. make sure when you make it that it's gonna fit in the bin, like this uh, scythe. We made it, and as we were packing before we left, I'm like, oh, we didn't even just think about it fitting just in the fits. bin. Just fits. But also just, like, tons of, you know, fluff in there, uh, foam. Um, I know another cosplayer mentioned making, like, a sheet for the TSA saying what it is and what it contains, and just in case they open it. It's not real. <laughs> and then, like, on the outside, um, right, you know, pretty please don't ruin my stuff or it's fragile, this side up. And as you're in the plane, you see it upside down going down the thing, but you're like... If I packed it good enough, it's still okay. Yeah, so, we've, so far we've had luck with yeah. that. Yeah, we, we also zip tie it closed so that as it's coming back, we know that if the TSA opened it right away or if they didn't. <laughs> so those are our tips. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And I think we'll go over here. Oh my gosh, this microphone is too tall. You can, um, I can tip it down, I think, oh, if you need okay. to, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so I guess, like, at what? level would you say this kind of stops being a hobby and starts being like a profession because like the stuff that you guys have is like really amazing and elaborate and beautiful but it also seems really hard for like a regular person with like a nine to five or who's like in school to do that kind of stuff well um i by trade work during the day in the courts uh the superior courts so i do work eight to five monday through friday uh, my wife is an engineer who works Monday oh, through Friday, engineer. 8 to 5. It's just, it's something that you love to do, you know? Uh, people go to a gym and work out, and they make time for it because they love to do it. They, they love that. It's, it's part of them. We get home, and it may be like, all right, today we're going to cut out, uh, you know, pieces of warbler, or today we're going to sculpt some epoxy while we're watching TV and eating dinner. Um, it really becomes a love, and you make time for what you love. Or maybe the weekend. Hey, this weekend, we're going to dedicate Saturday and Sunday. We're not going out with friends. There's been plenty of times that we've had to cancel events. Or, hey, no, you can't come over today. We're working on the costume. We need to get this done. And so that's part of the budgeting your time. Like earlier, you just, you just make time for it. Absolutely. Thank you. I don't know. Do you have anything to oh. Yeah, I guess we also both work full time and then we live about an hour away, so we have weekends. We, yeah, we have side projects that we take homework during the week and then we get it together during the weekends. But I will say it is a big time commitment depending on what you're planning to do. 
Um, luckily, our friends and family are really cool about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just disappear pretty much for three yeah. months of the year, and we're like, it's right, cosplay time. And when can you <laughs> hang out? On oh, January. <laughs> so. Yeah, and it's really hard to consider yourself a professional, even if you spend all of your time doing it, because right. you have to be able to financially support yourself with just cosplay. Um, I fortunately am like a housewife, so <laughs> I have taken on cosplay as a full-time thing, but trust me, I do not, I would not be able to like support myself on the stuff that I make. Um, I, I do it because I love it and I'm going to keep doing it. I stream on Twitch and stuff, but I by no means consider myself a professional cosplayer, even though I do do it pretty much full-time. Awesome Thank you. question. Thank you. And over here. Hi guys, my name is Brian. Um, I have a two-part question um, relating to materials. So the first part is, um, how do you go about picking your materials for your cosplay? Because as I can see from your cosplays, like your armor looks like it's really heavy, but you say it's, it's not as heavy as it looks, and your cosplay looks like it's real flesh, but you know you obviously made it yourself. So how do you go about picking the materials? And then the second part is. Um, how do you know how materials interact with each other, like certain paints with certain materials or certain adhesives? Um, is it like a scientific approach or is it just trial and error? Yes, everybody up here is a qualified scientist. <laughs> yes. Uh, we don't even measure things. We, we, our measuring system is it's this high on one Dixie cup and it's one high on this Dixie cup. So um, we experiment a lot. Yeah, there's certainly like pro people that will look up the measurements and like read the backs of the cans and like <laughs> what's the reaction to things. That is the best approach. Um, what we tend to do is we just, uh, we kind of research it and then we kind of do test pieces um, and just see what happens and what works, what doesn't. It's all part of the failure learning thing that we were talking about. Yeah, the choosing materials part um, is, it's important to choose things because in a, an appropriate way because you're gonna be wearing them. Um, you need to figure out how you're gonna move wearing these costumes. And if, if I made all of this out of thermoplastic, I'm gonna add tons and tons of weight to it because it's not a light material. So if you have to make something huge, you need to choose a light material. If you need to make tiny little details, then you can use those thermoplastics and, and epoxy sculpts and things like that that are, that are heavier. Um, and I honestly, I just choose materials that I like working with. So I, I do, like I said earlier during my failure, um, I try other materials, but I tend to go back to the ones that I like. But definitely weight is something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. I do a lot of the glue testing, like trying to figure out what adhesives work on different materials. It's, you'll make mistakes and you'll learn. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, and I think we have time for one more question over here. Yes. <laughs> Hello. I was just wondering the price difference in like your lowest level budget cosplay to like your most advanced or ones that you're trying to do. Um, that's a great question. Uh, like I said, cosplay for me specifically, this is probably my lowest cost costume. Um, you know, it, it goes, I think maybe, I think this is around like 400 three or four hundred, um, to Prophet Velen, which included casting silicones and, and really advanced stuff, uh, you know, I stopped counting at about 3,000. So, um, <laughs> you know, it, it really can, it can vary. But for me, that's my, my difference, I would say. Yeah, I've, I've made, like, very simple costumes. Like, I was Louise from Bob's Burgers. So I had to make bunny ears and a little dress, and I made that for maybe, like, $35 of worth of materials. Um, my first BlizzCon costume was my first version of Chromie. I think that one was around $400. It had a little bit of armor. It had a wig. And, and the price, I did have to buy some tools. Um, so the price was inflated a little bit by buying a Dremel and buying things like that. Um, but the past two costumes have been quite complicated and I have remade a lot of stuff and things. And I normally spend a little over $1,000 on my BlizzCon costumes now. We don't even keep track. because <laughs> <laughs> We have a hard time doing casual it's cosplays. And then we just try to not look at what we spend. I know. It's the after BlizzCon, we look at our bank account and go, oh, that's what happened. <laughs> and we should sell something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're not good at that, so don't ask us. Yeah, no. <laughs> awesome. ask them. Thank you. Uh, so this is our last question on this side and in total. Wow, that's difficult. 
Hi, good afternoon. I'm looking at you guys, I feel like the sky is the limit in terms of cosplay. Like any sort of character design, any sort of creation is just plausible. Your vellum blows me away Thank every you. time I see it. But is there any sort of character design, any sort of cosplay that's just impossible because of budgetary reasons, characters too complicated, anything that you've had to abandon? Mike, you that had a good one. Yeah, uh, you know, that's a great question because one of our ideas was, well, we had two. One, we were going to do the Goblin Shredder and my head was going to be the goblin with this little body, and then I was, you know, uh, but physically impossible in terms of having the legs. It, it just wasn't going to work out. And then Ignis, the furnace master. So our idea was to build this nine-foot foam, you know, monstrosity with a giant dragon cloak, and but, uh, no. Um, it, it's just expect to be very uncomfortable if you're going to try anything like that. Um, but those were costumes for us that we just... We're like, nah, not happening. Yeah, but definitely push yourself if you think you can do it um, and you're willing to try. I didn't know if I could make a centaur body, and I didn't know if I could make the back legs walk while I walked, but I worked and I designed and I engineered until I built a pulley system, I built a deer butt, and I, the thing weighed 20 pounds and I dragged it around for 12 hours of BlizzCon. So you can literally make anything. You just have to be willing to put in the time and effort. It's not and if you can do it, it's how long can you suffer in it or yes. do you want to suffer in it. Yeah, I didn't, there was no way that you would have told me that we would have made Reinhardt. And we're just, yeah. as again, liquid courage, we're like, let's do it. And, <laughs> have some whiskey, yeah. said, let's do it. And we're like, and we don't want to talk about it until we built the boots. And we're like, I've got some boots here. Yeah, just one step at a time, and it happened. And it's really satisfying. It's really uncomfortable, but you can do it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah depends just how horrible do it. Feel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, thank you guys for chatting with me up here. And thank you guys for joining us. If you would like to learn anything else from these lovely folks, you can find them on social media here. Um, and uh, we'll see you around. Thanks for joining.